Welcome to CleverCat, a powerful yet easy to use application for creating catalogs and other PDF documents. Your data is stored in the cloud where it is available from any location. For this introduction, I'll begin with the data editor. Here, your data is organized into categories at the top of the form and the products are shown in the data sheet at the bottom. Click any row in the data sheet to view the product photo. Double click any cell to edit the text. Click anywhere outside the cell to save your changes. You can even copy and paste data directly from a spreadsheet into the data sheet. Select a block of cells in the spreadsheet, press Ctrl C, select the matching block in the data sheet, and press Ctrl V. Rows can be easily organized by dragging and dropping to a new position. The datasheet is highly customizable. Notice that each category can have a different number of columns, and these columns can be reorganized by dragging to new positions. Use the checkboxes on the left side of the datasheet to select which items will be printed. Click the Print Preview button at any time. Your PDF file is created in real time and opens in a new browser window. You can download or print the PDF file directly from your browser. You can create any number of templates to suit your data and change the assigned template at any time to print your products in a different format. This order form is created from the exact same data as this flyer. To change the design of a template, click the Template Editor button. On the Page Setup form, you set the general look of the page. There are a wide range of options for the page header and footer, and you can click the Print Preview button at any time to experiment with these options. For this introduction, I'm going to work with a basic grid-style template and set the number of rows and columns of product layouts. Click the Next Page button to open the Layout Editor. On this form, you add and format data in the product layout. The design pad has the same shape as the individual product layouts you saw in the previous form. Simply double-click any label cell or data cell on the stack to add it to the design pad. You can move cells by dragging them with your mouse. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard or numeric keypad to move and resize the cells. After placing the cell, click the Formatting tab to change font style, colors, backgrounds, and borders. Click the Print Preview button at any time to see your changes. It is important to note that when you are previewing from the design forms, the preview will be limited to just two pages. To see all your data, click the Print button. On the Printing menu, you can highlight any individual category and click the Print Preview button, or you can select multiple categories using the checkboxes and click the Print button to create a document which combines all the selected categories into a single PDF file. Depending on how much data you have, it may take several minutes to create the file. Click the Update button on the Files tab to see if your file has been completed. You can open the completed file in your browser to download or print it. You can print a table of contents or index page separately, or if you want to see those pages on the category selection list, select this option on the configuration form. Now, I'll demonstrate creating a new catalog from a data file. When you first create your account, there will be no databases in the selection list. Click the Create button to create your first database. By default, our support staff cannot view your data. If you need assistance or would like us to create templates for you, you can click this option to grant us permission to open your database. You can revoke that permission at any time. There are two methods for adding data. 
The first is to add it directly, the same way you would if you were working with a spreadsheet. Click the Data Editor button to begin. The first thing you have to do is create a new category. Next, insert the number of rows you need in this category. You can use the Category Editor form to add column headers, or, if they are blank, you can click them here at the top of the datasheet. Now, you can enter data directly in the datasheet, or copy and paste blocks of data from a spreadsheet. Click the cell again, or any other cell, to save your changes. To add a photo, double-click the photo cell in the datasheet. Select any existing photo, or upload a new image file, or multiple files. The name of the image file will be shown in the cell, and a thumbnail will be shown in the Image Preview window. If you already have all your product data in a spreadsheet, the second method of adding data is to import it as a CSV file. On the Import form, the first step is to upload the data file. The upload will only accept CSV files, so you may have to use the Save As option in Excel to save the data in that format. This first step only uploads the data file to the server. At this point, it is not connected to your database. The next step is to import that CSV file into a temporary database. All you have to do is select the file and click the Import button. If successful, your data should show up in the preview window at the bottom of this form. At this point, the data is still not connected to your own database. Select the Mapping tab to continue. Here, you select which columns from the data file you want to import into your database. Category is a required selection. If the row in the data file does not contain text in that selected column, that row will not be imported. If your file contains the names of your photos, you can add the photos in this step. You will upload the actual image files later. Select up to 20 data columns to import. When you add a column, the name of the column is automatically added as a label. These labels will also be imported and show up as the column headers you saw back on the data editor form. You can change these labels here, or at any time later on the category editor form. You don't have to use all the selections on this form, or even match them to the order of your data file. There is also a selection called Notes. This can be used as a data column, like any of the 20 other data columns. The difference is that on the Template Editor, there are additional formatting options for this one cell, and we may expand the functionality of this cell in future updates to include some custom options. So, if you have one data file which may require special formatting, we recommend that you use this selection. If this is the first time you are importing the file, just click the Append button to add the new data. In the tutorials, I'll demonstrate how to use the Update option to update your database with changes you have made in your spreadsheet. If successful, the Import function reports how many categories and records were created, and you can go back to the Data Editor to see those records. In this example, I previously uploaded all the image files. At this point, you may have to use the Upload function to select and upload your own image files. You might also want to check out the Category Editor form now. Here, you set up columns that you see on the Data Editor. Notice that the labels that were entered on the Import form show up here. You can change them now if you need to. If there are columns which are not being used, you can uncheck them so that they don't take up space on the data sheet. Return to the data editor to see those changes. Now that there is data, you can design a template to suit that data. Click the Template Editor button to begin. Because there are no templates yet, you will be asked to create a new template by giving it a name. The name does not have to match the category, but if you're going to be creating different templates for each category, you may find it easier if they do. Begin by setting the page size. Most users will use the traditional letter or A4 setting, but you can create a custom size. For example, if you want to create a PDF document which fits the dimensions of an iPhone or another device with a 16x9 resolution, 
You don't have to enter the exact size of that screen, only values which are in the same ratio. So, I'll enter a width of 9 inches and a height of 16 inches. Here's a preview of how that template might look on an iPhone. Next, you can experiment with the header and footer settings or set up the product layouts. I recommend you start with a basic grid style template. Dynamic templates are a bit more complex and you will find it easier to create them if you understand the basics. A border around the product layouts is optional. It is enabled by default because it makes it a bit easier to visualize the page during the design process. To turn off the border, just set the line width to zero. Click the Next Page button to create the individual product layout. On this page, you add labels and cells to the design pad by double-clicking them on the stacks. There are two stacks, each with two columns. The label is the column on the left, and the corresponding data cell is on the right. There are also cells for photos and a few other elements. When you add a cell to the design pad, it becomes the active cell, and its name is indicated in the active cell box at the top of the form. Make any cell active by clicking it on the design pad or clicking its placeholder on the stack. If a cell on the design pad should be hidden behind another cell, you can bring it to the front by clicking its placeholder. To format a cell, you must first set it as active. Now you can use any of the options on the formatting tab to customize that cell. Some formatting options will not show up on the screen. Remember, you can click the Print Preview button at any time to see all of your changes. However, because you'll be doing this very often, a preview created from the design forms is limited to just two pages. The Tuning tab contains a few more settings which affect the appearance of the cell. Padding controls the inner distance of the text from the borders of the cell. By default, all cells are placed on layer 1, so you can easily move an image or other cell to the background by setting it to layer 0. Most users will not use the layer function because they will not require overlapping cells. Also, if a data cell's label is on the same layer, the label will always print behind the data. On the Cell tab, you can set the data type for each cell. The default setting is Text. If you set a cell as Number or Currency, you can use the Markup and Discount functions at print time. These functions allow you to change the printed prices by a percentage value without editing the underlying data. If you set the type to Currency, the Currency symbol can be added automatically. Both of these types can be automatically formatted to include trailing zeros after the decimal point if those zeros were not included in the original data. There are also All Labels and All Field buttons at the top of the form, which you can use to select and change the formatting of groups of cells in one step. Those are the basics of creating a catalog. All the functions of the application are covered in detail in the main tutorials, which you can access at any time by clicking the Tutorial button on any form.